My name is Zach. I'm a developer at Pulsify. <laughs> and uh, today, I'm going to be giving a talk about bringing Angular to life with animations. So the web today is filled with so many things that's trying to grab our attention, right? It's got all the bold fonts, bold colors. But one of the things that never fails to captivate us and draw us in is animations or motion design principles. League of Legends, hey. So today, I'm going to introduce three ways of how we can introduce animations into our Angular applications using what I call the call stack. Now, one important thing to note is that there's no such thing as a call stack officially. I made it up just for you guys. And what it is is basically CSS animations, Angular animations, and for those of you who are a bit more adventurous out there, we have Lati animations. So in line with the theme of NGMY today, I made a demo about food. So this is CalStack Burgers. And essentially, what you can do is you can add ingredients to this list to create your burger. You hit the spatula icon. It makes a call to an HTTP server. And after X amount of time, it fires back to us and gives us a burger and the number of calories within that burger. So it looks simple enough, and it works. But it lacks interactivity. You know, it doesn't feel animated. Let's change that with some CSS animations. Now, the backbone of CSS animations are these two CSS properties, transition and animation. I'm sure you guys know that. And whenever you want to move a CSS property from one value to another, but you want to do it smoothly, that's when you use CSS animations. On the other hand, uh, sorry, CSS transitions. On the other hand, CSS animations are for giving your HTML elements, like a set of instructions. You get through one of these each one at a time over a period of time that you call your timeline. Pro tip, both in CSS animations and Angular animations, not every CSS property is created equally. Not everything should be animated. And for performance reasons, we strongly suggest that the only thing you should try to animate is the transform property and the opacity property. There's a good reason for this, which we won't get into today, but I've included an article at the back of our, my slides if you guys are interested. Now, with some CSS animations, what our application is going to look like is something like that. As you can see, there's a hover effect. It slides in. I think it looks a lot smoother. And now we've got a little loading animation as well. Oh, I'm just going to move the mouse out of the way. And I think that looks a lot smoother already. <clears throat> Transitions are pretty self-explanatory. I'm sure everyone knows how to do them here. So we're just going to skip through this one. The same way, our slide and animation is just going to involve some keyframes, which we attach to a class. And that's that. But how do we add this class onto our template? Well, one good way we can do this, in our case, is simply just to at attach it as a class. And the reason this works so well is because when we're using things like structural directives, and these include our ng-if, ng-4, and ng-switch, these directives dictate when our uh, HTML elements are basically rendered onto the DOM. And whenever they're rendered for the first time, what happens is that it would trigger the animations a total of one time, and it looks like you've animated it into the page, whether you're using ng-if, ng-4, or ng-switch, which works for this case. case. What about loading animations? Well, this one is conceptually identical to before. It just has a bit more keyframes. And how we can add it into our application is that we can use property binding. So we are binding the loading animation uh, class name onto our spatula object based on whether or not the this.loading property is true on our component or not, All right? which works. And when you click on the spatula, what happens is that we make an HTTP call uh, we first set this.loading to true, which starts the animation. When the HTTP call comes back, we intercept it using our RxJS tap animation, which if you guys went to RxJ, the RxJS talk to yesterday, you get it. And yeah, and we intercept it, set it to false, and voila. Now, CSS animations cover a lot of ground, and you can do a lot of things with it. But there are a couple of things that are a bit more troublesome. One of these examples would be when you're animating something that's disappearing from a page. 
Because once Angular runs change detection, let's say the thing is not on the page anymore, it says, aha, we're going to remove you from the page, and that there's nothing left for you to bind your CSS animations to. It's nothing to hook onto, and therefore you can't animate it leaving the page. It's not there anymore. What we can do with this is use Angular animations. And this is the anatomy of an Angular animation. It starts with a trigger name, um, a transition pair, and basically your animation sequence. And how you'd read this is if a trigger goes through this transition pair, as in it starts from an any state and it goes into a void state, essentially leaving the page, what happens is that we animate it this way. And you can see these animate uh, functions as sort of the keyframes in your CSS animation. It's essentially the same thing and runs one by one. Uh, a couple of pro tips, but we'll skip that. And how do we use these uh, animations? What we can do is first we have to declare them inside our component like this, and then we can simply add it onto the HTML elements that we're interested in using the Elias trigger name syntax. And lucky for us, Angular Animations ships with a couple of things out of the box that can make it really useful. For example, you, if, let's say you wanted to disable the animation. What you could do is use the Elias.disable property uh, and basically pass it a Boolean value to say whether or not you want it to run or not. Alternatively, there are a couple of pretty cool events, event emitters, that you can bind to. So in the case that, let's say, you wanted a custom callback animation to run some business logic when your animation starts or when your animation ends, there you go. Finally, we have this concept of router transitions. And if you think about it, right, every page on Angular is literally just a child component of the router outlet. And by using the router outlet itself as a trigger point, we can make it so that whenever we change routes or we navigate anywhere within our Angular applications, we run some animation on the child component of the router outlet, which is essentially the page itself. What does this look like? Well, here we go. So we're navigating between pages, and we are essentially running an animation to animate the old page off the screen and the new page in. So I think that looks pretty neat already. Last but not least, We've got Lottie animations. And Airbnb calls this the future of animations and interactive design. I think that sounds a bit too much, but essentially what you're going to use them for is to create custom animations like this, <laughs> which I think looks smooth, slick, and adds a lot of character to your application. The biggest departure, though, from how from this animation and our previous techniques is that you don't write code to create these animations. Rather, you use a tool, a designer-friendly tool like this. This one's called Haiku Animator, but you could equivalently use um, Adobe After Effects, for example, which I didn't pay for because uh, I'm cheap. <laughs> but <laughs> what you could do is you'd animate by pulling your vectorized assets somewhere around the page at different timelines, thereby creating keyframes. And when you're done with this, you export this file as a JSON that's called a Lottie file. And it can be used cross-platform across iOS, Android, Angular, and even those folks at React, which is pretty cool. And to me, the biggest strength of this is really that Lottie is a way that we can empower designers within our company to create assets that are both fully featured and feature-rich that you can easily implement into our applications without too much developer intervention, while developers who want to do, get into the nitty gritty can still program these animations, because at the end of the day, all they are are SVGs wrapped in data. So that's pretty darn cool. Uh, yeah, and again, anything that frees up more developer time to, so that we can fix like bugs and stuff, well, it's an absolute win in my book. All right, so what does this mean for our friends at CalStack Burgers? All I can say is that I think with this Lottie animation, their burgers are going to look extra spicy. Which I think, you know, looks slick. It looks good. All right, so let's recap from here. CSS animations 
Angular animations, and Lottie animations. Use CSS as your first line of defense. Um, most people already know how to use CSS animations and create them. So in order to use them, we can just explore how we can bind them to our templates using either property binding or our structural directives to make them work. What we get is an easy API to get that done. Angular animations, on the other hand, use them whenever you want to animate something that's leaving the page. You can also use them whenever you want fine-grained control over your animations, when they start, when they end, and what kind of business logic you can trigger through callbacks at various stages of that animation. Also, it's your one and only tool to get router transitions done in an easy fashion. Finally, Lottie animations. Use this to create beautiful custom animations on your applications that will wow your users and give you that sense of brand identity. I'm just gonna leave with this thought. Angular animations, any animations for that matter, you know, they bring in that wow factor. But at the end of the day, they're often, they're never what makes a compelling product. For that, you still need to build powerful features that your users love and design a UI that's both aesthetic and intuitive that makes sense even without the use of animations. After that, once you've got, gotten those bases nailed, well, you can bring in the animations and bring your applications to life. I'm gonna leave with one more final uh, quote by one of my favorite authors. So, perfection is not when there's nothing left to add, it's when there's nothing left to take away. Keep it simple. And these are some of my resources that I use to create this. If you guys are interested, just check them out from the slides that will be sent to you. And yeah, thanks so much for being such an awesome audience. And thank you.